and hello from Walla Walla, Washington in the middle of the night. <laughs> so, this is a commercial small boring bar, a uh, braised carbide, and it's got a little piece of carbide braised on there, and I dug this out of a junk box, and somebody had ground the top by hand, and it's kind of lumpy. I got a pointer somewhere around just lumpy across the top there. So, um, I can control the angle here readily on the cutter grinder. And that's simply by, let's see if I can get this focused down here. Okay, this is a work head here. This is the all tool Rotodex. And I, I could just as easily use the uh, regular standard work head that's right here. But see, it's a lot heavier, and the smaller one is real fast. Real fast to use, it's real nice. But the standard head's very nice to have, and it'll do this too. So, first thing to do, I got this all leveled out here, and I'll put the tool in there. And I take a square, see I have a little riser right here? And I take a square and I'll bring it right to that tool. And I can check it by, um, by the angles and all that stuff. But first get in a square. If this one here is uh, actually flat across the top, so I'm going to put a, a bit of an angle in it on the top. I, actually, two angles. I'm going to have on the top here, I'm going to have some back rake and, and a degree or two of side rake if I can get away with it. Okay, so I got that there. This is level. I use a height gauge to find, you know, to get to center uh, of, of this. So I can find center of this and the tip that way. So over on the, on the machine, it's a little bit different and I'll show how that is. So I'm going to grind this after a while because I'm set up to do it. Let's see if you can see me swing that over. So I can swing that over like that and grind that top, change the angles at will. Um, by tilting, see? And I can get that uh, little bit of uh, back rake by moving it, uh, the degrees here this way, and then um, the side top rake by giving it a degree or two up that way than going across the wheel. Okay, now we'll get over to uh, the jig boring machine. Okay, here we are at the more number two jig boring machine. And the first thing we do is you take a square against those uh, vertical waves and bring it against the flat of the head. Now, almost all boring heads have a flat, and that's what that's for, okay? So, the flat is flat. Okay, I got a little flashlight here because it's hard to see. And uh, <clears throat> it's small too. So the dial's pointing towards the machine. It makes the tip of the tool point out where we can get to it and see it. The, the hole is centered. I've been working on these holes here. And there's a mark right here, exactly in center, where I can remove this uh, 
this boring bore and replace it almost exactly <laughs> better than better than sighting down it like a two dollar pistol okay now to check that let's get around this way i'm gonna do an on the machine check let's see if that'll do it there so i'm taking a Vernier protractor and I got it against this edge, this edge here. It's flat enough for this. Let's get that. And I'm gonna raise the tool just about the right spot, but still kind of have it in the hole. And pull that on over. No, oh, it still wasn't in the hole. Right about there. Lift it up a little bit. I can see that I got the. Let me see here. Right about in there. And read it on the scale. I tell you what, I gotta get a magnifying glass for this thing. Okay. Probably need it. I am reading just about five degrees, but I think that's too much. I want to check it one more time here. Let's see. I'm going to go from that. I'm going to call that good. It's easier if I get right down there with the magnifying glass. But I think you can get the uh, gist of what I'm doing. What am I reading this time? I'll have to go over here to the light. Oh. No, I'm reading. I'm still reading about five degrees. Usually you can't get that much out of uh, um, a little piece of carbide but these things uh, just sort of aren't the most accurately made things and actually I think both of these uh, no this one's a criterion but I believe this is an import and they, they work fairly well sometimes and I always use C2 uh, if, if you buy the C5 ones uh, they're, they'll usually chip because they're too grow. So if you're buying a cheap one, always get the C2. And always start with uh, 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 general purpose uh, carbide rather than uh, harder is generally not better. Okay, I don't know if you can see that uh, reflection on the top. So I'm going to put that in the cutter grinder here pretty soon and uh, grind that. I'm all set up to uh, grind board bars because I got this in here. And I don't know, it's a little too big. No, it, it would actually do those holes. Okay, so we know what the, we know what the angle is here on this one. And usually they're about three degrees. So you can you can find out what the angle is and then change it if you need to. And a lot of small things, uh, <coughs> excuse me, add up. Now, when I was boring these holes, making the uh, in measuring uh, uh, holders or trays, which is still in progress here. Hey, I just uh, move along. And uh, I took a little uh, break to make a part for the camera here. So I will continue on and uh, get, these, get these holes right. But if something's not right, I can change angles, sharpen, change the nose radius at will. So this 
way I know that the uh, uh, tool sound center and I know what the angles are. Uh, the back, there you can have a, a back rake and a little bit of top side rake. And uh, a lot of times there's none on these and sometimes there's <laughs> four or five. And the carbide can be kind of thick on them. And uh, you really got to size them. You gotta, you, you're probably going to have to change it. So you get the tip on center, and then you bring it into the hole size you want, and then you can see if you've got enough heel clearance here behind the cutting edge. So this is just a way to take control of uh, these finicky little things. And uh, sometimes the problem uh, is that the tool's not on center. And it's more difficult boring holes with a machine like this than on a lathe. Because on a lathe, you've got, you can raise and lower the tool, right? So you can lower the tool and increase the angle. Like that, see? And then, then bring it back to center. So you can change, you know, you can have it uh, just flat like that. Uh, for brass or something, and then bring it back to center. If you want uh, uh, negative, you put it at negative, and then bring it back to center. On this, you're stuck. So you got to find center. You don't have the uh, other movement, you know. So you only got the feed movement this way. You don't have a lateral movement this way. We can uh, rotate the tool and keep it on center and uh, be in control of your uh, tool angle. I just thought I'd point that out. Then another thing, uh, when, I was doing the, when I'm doing these test holes, I don't know if you noticed, but I took and I, I machined the top of this off. Okay, I machined the, the uh, what came from the mill off here. Oh, I don't know. 20 thousandths or so. But when this punches through, this is harder because it's been rolled, it's core hard. And I got down into the core of the metal here. So when this was going through, you, you might hear it squeaking at the very end. That's because it's going through the hard stuff on the back side. And, and I guarantee you, that the hole's going to be smaller because it had to go through that tough, tougher stuff and deflected the tool a little bit. So if I didn't machine this off like I did, it would do it at both ends. So <laughs> the hole would measure tighter at the very top of this hard stuff here because it's harder. Push the tool back. Made the, made the hole smaller. Then when it got into the softer core, the tool relaxed and, and cut a bigger hole. So <laughs> when you stick the dial board gauge in, it's going to pinch at the top. Now that can generally be taken care of with like a triangle with a scraper or best yet, uh, running a, run a sun home through it. But uh, I just thought I'd point that out, and uh, that if you're doing, we're working in tenths of a thousandth of an inch here, and a tenth of a thousandth is 100 millionths. Yeah. And the accuracy of this spindle is 12 millionths rotational accuracy. That costs money. And I've talked about these spindle bearings. That's a problem. If there's a problem with it. Okay, so this is how you control it. Okay. And I will get back to boring these holes. And uh, I think I'll just call this a separate video like a 
Four more angles, <laughs> something like that. But I thought I, I thought that might be helpful because uh, it's uh, it's better than guessing at stuff. Like uh, it's better than uh, sticking a, a bar on a hole and if the heel's rubbing, rotating the bar until it doesn't. Uh, well, you know, it's, uh, you're getting the tip off center there, and uh, it's just, you're not going to get your uh, best holes that way. And I tell you what, these are nice looking holes. Now, the, the uh, mill over there can produce some pretty nice looking holes, but they're really too rough using uh, a dial bore gauge in. So, Accurate holes off the, that uh, standard milling machine there. That's even a, it's a <laughs> brown and short number two plain standard. Uh, <clears throat> requires a second operation to get anywhere close to this level. And honing is a good uh, one or shooting the holes under size uh, 64 to a 32nd. Bring them over here and finish them on the Jake Boring machine. Okay, over and out.